Francis, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. I want to talk about your book because it was very impactful to me. But before we go into that, you have a quote that is very profound. And I want to talk to you about why is that quote so important to you. So I'm going to read it. Okay. okay? It says, I am who I am today because I decided who I wanted to be. Everything starts with a decision and has to be followed by action before you will become. What does that mean to you and what are you hoping that anyone who reads that quote or sees the quote, what are you hoping that they receive from it? I hope they receive from it that um, pretty much everything in life you have to decide on what you want to do in life. Once you make that decision, no matter what hardships you come up against, if that's really what you want to do, that's what you should take actions every day to t um, step forward to try to make happen. So I want people to understand that nobody, like my book says, what's holding you back from your greatness? Mm -hmm. Nobody's holding you back from your greatness but yourself. Mm -hmm. So once you decide what you want to do, you take those actions and, and do things to go towards that every day, you will soon become that. Now, in your book, What's Holding You Back From Your Greatness, you talk about what is holding you back, as you just said. Now, one thing I want to po point out, I think it's very difficult for people to realize that there is a lot of greatness within them. Exactly. And they have this disbelief or lack of confidence, and this is what really caused them to not follow their dreams. So in your book, whenever you talk about holding back from your greatness, what will you say be one of the biggest key things that people allow to hold them back? Would it be peer pressure? Would it be fear? It's fear. I mean, everybody's scared to go into the unknown. Mm -hmm. When you don't feel comfortable, people you tend to go back into their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. So I would say the biggest thing hold everybody back is fear. Now, you also reference life as a GPS navigation system. Right. And I thought that you were so on point with that because I think what you're saying, the point you're trying to get out is we don't oftentimes realize that we make choices in life. Right. Oftentimes we have to decide whether we're going to go left or whether we're going to go right. But most of us tend to stay straight in the middle and go nowhere, which is what I call tunnel vision. This is that person that stays there and really doesn't look outside the box to realize there's so many other opportunities or options out there for them. Why did you reference life as a GPS system, and why do you feel that so many people don't think that they need to map out their own course in life? First, the name, actually, the GPS Success Guide, which is the title. Is actually, also your initials. It came from yes. <laughs> my initials. My name is Gerald Paul Simmons, mm -hmm. Jr. So that was the first thing that triggered my mind. Mm -hmm. And being that a GPS is a navigational system, mm -hmm. I figured the two goes together. Right. I mean, it's certain if you put in the right um, coordinates for life, just like if you put the right coordinates. And when I came here, for instance, mm -hmm. I put in my GPS success guide. I mean, I put in my GPS the directions here, mm -hmm. and it got me here. So in life, if we take that same road to put in the, the, the right directions to get us to where we want to be, we'll soon get there. But I think what we do oftentimes, even when we do use our GPS system in our car, sometimes we want to adhere to the directions that's being given to us. Right. And in life, a lot of us, no matter how much advice or suggestions someone gives to us, we still want to go off course. Um, looking in the mirror is one of the chapters in your book. Mm -hmm. That's a very big step for someone to take because it's very hard to look in the mirror and really see inside. Exactly. Because I think we focus so much on the outside when we want to see what is really going on with me. Can I look in the mirror and be very real with who I am or real with the changes that I need to make? I think that oftentimes we look in the mirror, we need to ask ourselves two various questions. Am I happy with who I am? Right. And am I happy with the choices that I decided to make? And if I'm not, then I need to be big enough to admit that. What system would you, or recommendation, would you give to someone to be able to stand in the mirror, ask themselves those two questions, and be very real and open with who they are and what they need to change? Looking in the mirror, I mean, that's, I put that, actually, that's the first chapter in the book. Mm -hmm. um, personally, my life didn't change until I looked in the mirror and really did self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. So I feel that nobody, Anybody in life, they can't really change if they're always worried about what's going on in the outside world. Exactly. You got to worry about what's going on the inside. And when I started worrying about what's going on the inside of me, and I put the picture of what I wanted my outside world to be mm -hmm. inside of me, that's when things start becoming clear for me. Like on my mirror at home right now, 
I have written in my, on my mirror with pen, I mean with marker, it says we, we become who we claim to be. Mm -hmm. And I have I am king. Is that like a positive affirmation That's that you say to yourself every day? That's a positive affirmation that I, that I mean, I put I am king. On the other side, it says I am queen for my wife. Mm -hmm. On the bottom, Very it nice. says I am king. I am king for my two sons. Mm -hmm. It's just, I mean, we grew up in we a have time to go get a where job. we had to go to school and make good grades mm -hmm. and, and get a good job. So we wasn't pr programmed to look in the mirror and say positive affirmations to ourselves, knowing that we can be greater than just a job. Right. We can't be greater than just a scholarship for sports. So I figure if I start now mm -hmm. with my kids, like my son is five years old. Last week they said, um, he asked, the teacher asked him what he wanted to be when he grow up. My son said a businessman. Mm -hmm. Very good. He didn't say a lawyer, a doctor, right. a pro athlete. He said a businessman. He thought beyond where he could go, which exactly. is very good. And you know he got that from you, exactly. which is very key. And I'm always talking to parents. And the advice and the tools that we give our kids today is going to take them for the rest of their life. And I think that's very positive that you're doing because I'm a big believer. The words that you put out there in the atmosphere, the atmosphere hears that. So if mm -hmm. you put something negative, you're going to get negativity. Get negative. If you put something positive, you're going to receive something positive. Positive affirmation is very key because I try to do that every day myself so that every single day, no matter how gloomy it is outside, no matter how I'm feeling, just to say I'm going to have a great day, nine times out of ten, you're going to have exactly. a great day. Right. Um, is that something that when you became older, is that also something that you started saying within yourself that I need to put these positive affirmations into the atmosphere so that I can get to where I am today as an author and public speaker? I wouldn't say as I became older. I say become, I became wiser. Okay, very good. I mean, age has nothing to do with when you become wise That's to me. True. So when I really stepped back and looked at everything around me, and like I said, look in the mirror, mm -hmm. when I noticed that everything around me was anything negative was going on, it started within me. So in order to change that, I had to start doing the positive affirmations, letting pe letting myself know I can be great. Right. You right, know. Right. So. That's where all that, all that came from, actually. In your book, you also talk about um, not allowing fear to step in place. You also reference, which I love, how important it is to have a relationship with Christ. And I believe that your other part of your book you mentioned is loving what you do. I truly believe if you love what you do right. and you do not let fear step in the way, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. But what's most important, if you have the relationship with Christ, He's going to allow you to think outside of the box in such a way that you will love what you do because he's going to be the person to instill the desire and passion in you. Once you have that relationship with Christ and you know that he has already instilled in you what your purpose is here on earth, there's no reason to be fearful. You put that in your book, and sometimes I have spoken to other authors, and they're a little bit on the edge. Do I mention Christ? Do I not mention Christ? Right. And I don't think we should do anything in our life without mentioning Christ. Why is that so important to you to have put it in your book? And when you did put it in there, did you think for a moment that it may deter some people from purchasing your book? I did, but at the same time, he says, who, I mean, I'm not really big. I haven't, I just started reading the Bible, mm -hmm. actually, but I grew Good up. You. In the, I grew up in the Word. Mm -hmm. My mom kept us in church. So me not saying where I know my power is coming from, that's why in my book I said get your relationship right with your God. Mm -hmm. We all serve different gods. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have I mean, different religions. That's where separations come. Mm -hmm. But when you ask them, is, your, is it a higher power, they all serve a higher power. Right. So me not putting God into what, I, what I'm doing would be just wrong of me to me, you know. It, to me, it seemed like it would bring me to my ruins because I know where my power is coming from. I know who I speak to every night and every morning when I get up or every night yeah. when I go to bed. So me not putting him into what I do, if it deters people mm -hmm. from what I'm from my book, they, it wasn't meant for them. Good for you. You're standing strong in what you believe in. Exactly. I talk a lot about on the show of the I Got It moment. It's the moment where you learn a life lesson because everything we do, we should learn something from it. Every interview I do, I walk away with some type of life lesson. What is your I got it moment? Because once you get it, you learn from it, you process it, and you're able to kick it into high gear. Mm -hmm. What was your I got it moment from the time you began to write the book all the way to the completion of writing it? Honestly, the, the I got it moment mm -hmm. was when I noticed my wife 
having my back on what I'm doing. Mm. One of my favorite quotes in my book says, it's true that a woman can never change a man, but it's amazing what a strong woman's love can do to the wise man. Mm -hmm. So my I got it moment was when I see my wife, if I'm at an event, she's talking to people, handing out my card. Mm -hmm. She's coming, tapping me on my shoulder, Supporting asking you. me for my card to give to people. So when you have your family and your support team there for you, that's your I got it moment to me. That's what success really is to me. When you can look back and you see people that's been there from the beginning. Right. People that's not there to, to that's been there from the beginning and there to push you forward. And they see your, your hunger for what you're doing and they're there to support you. And that's so phenomenal to have a spouse that supports you because there's so many people that do not have that support. And when you have that loved one saying to you, you can do it, then you know you can do it. Exactly. It's been such a pleasure having you here. I know you've helped so many of my viewers that are watching the show to help them to live beyond what they thought they could live and also go out and reach their dreams. So thank you so much for writing this fantastic book. What I want you all to do is to go to Amazon.com and purchase a copy of Gerald's book and log on to g.simmonsjr at kingofprosperity.com and find out how you can book Gerald for one of your upcoming events. Also, if you would like for him to do a book signing at one of your venues, you will definitely want to get in contact with him. We're going to take a short break and come back with Don Miller.